Hi, and welcome to another episode of Hot Takes with me, The Silver Fox, and it is finally the last one of the day. Uh, and it's a, it's a, it's a, traditionally we like to end on something a bit light, and we have just the story. It's a follow-up to um, the the new the new Ra Highland routing, I suppose you could call it, uh, um, because it's the battle between uh, Bonnie Prince Charlie and the Redcoats all over again. This time at uh, Edinburgh Castle. And of course, it's over the Redcoats Cafe. Uh, the Nats don't like it. They want the name changed, even though the Redcoats were, you know, an awful lot of them were Scottish. Um, and it was only the Highlanders that they, they seemed to praise. Apparently, if you're a Nat, you only like the Highlanders. You don't like the Lowlanders. It's a very strange position to take, dividing your own supporters into Highlanders and Lowlanders. But hey, anything that divides the SNP has got to be good. But they are threatening to boycott this little cafe. Uh, I'm sure that um, the people in the red coats would be very, very pleased to see a lot fewer gnats in the cafe, lowering the tone and uh, making life generally miserable for people. So good, gnats, please stay away. I think everyone else would be pleased. But let's have a look to see what they're doing and why they're pointlessly moaning about the name of a cafe. You sad, sad, inadequate little men. Here goes. So sad little Scottish nationalists threaten to boycott of the Redcoats Cafe at Edinburgh Castle if the name isn't changed. Have you got nothing better to do with your sad, empty, pointless lives, you inadequate pricks? The name of the cafe caused that outrage last month, despite it being called Redcoats for over 30 years. But hey, for 30 years, there was no uh, real hate. But of course, this is this hate has been engendered by Nicola Sturgeon. So you can't just disagree now. You have to hate. And all of a sudden, oh, redcoats are a problem. Redcoats? Hmm. Perhaps somebody needs to rush out into the book uh, the book room, the bookstore, sorry, at uh, Edinburgh Castle, buy a history book, hand it to a gnat, and then stand over them while they read it until they understand their own damn history. What morons? What low-level intelligence do these people have? This is a result, of course, of 20 or 17 years of uh, national ed uh, SNP education, they're all coming out thick as mints, aren't they? Yeah, I went to school during the uh, during the SNP years. That's why I know nothing. That's why I don't know the history of my country. This is why I am a retard. That's why I vote SNP because I'm retarded. A group of extreme Scottish nationalists, sad, sad inadequates, are calling for a boycott. Back the ball. <laughs> I'm calling for a boycott of the Redcoat Cafe at Edinburgh Castle if the name of the facility is not changed. I hope that um, Edinburgh Castle stand firm and say, do you know what? GFY. And if you know what that is, if you know, you know. Anyway, Historic Environment Scotland is currently considering the name of the cafe after online outrage last month by a tiny group of hate-filled wankers. Perhaps the rest of us need to get on there and say, if you change this, we are boycotting you. You keep us as redcoats or else. If you give in to the demands of these hate warriors, then we will cause so much problem for you. We demand it remains redcoats. And then let's see where they go. There's more of us than them, you know. Anyway, despite the carrying the title for over 30 years, many Nats were clearly in the dark as they hit out when it was reopened following a refurbishment. Even SNP politicians got involved in the pile-on with the public body seemingly set to cave to their demands. If they cave, it goes to show that they are just weak. Weak, weak. Tell them no. Say no. What are they going to do? Are they going to come and cause criminal damage? Bless. It's paid for by the government, so you're going to have the SNP government fixing and repairing the damage caused by the SNP supporters continually. Perhaps the SNP government will then have to come out and say, please stop doing this. It comes despite historians explaining the complex history of the Redcoats in Scotland. You know, what with them being Scottish and all. And the strong links with the British Army has with the country. Redcoats were involved in suppressing the Jacobite Rebellion of 1745. Because I think it's important that Scots were ruled by an effete little French Pole who couldn't speak a word of Gaelic, or Gallic, sorry, uh, and who could only speak, really, French and a little bit of Latin. But hey, you know, you want him as king. They also fought in the American Revolution and were instrumental in the defeat of the French despot Napoleon. You know, 
All these Scots wearing red coats, yeah? Uh, however, is there actions in the aftermath of Culloden that remain controversial in parts of Scotland? You know, when Scots fought Scots and everyone else. There was, relatively speaking, you know, very few English at Culloden. It's a very weird, weird thing. Although, um, Cumberland, um, he was a bastard, even by any modern standards. Uh, he had a he had a statue made uh, and even at the time back in you know the day uh, and even by the standards of the day it was very unpopular they pulled it down uh, but I think, I think they've put it back up and I think out of a I don't know if it's a case of FU Scotland but I believe that where it's been re-erected it's actually pointing the horse, him on the horse pointing towards as though he's riding towards Scotland which I think is a little bit tacky but hey you know it is what it is uh, perhaps perhaps someone if they could work out how to get down to find, find the statue, someone in the SNP could come down and complain about it. Who knows? Anyway, Sean Clarkin of Action for Scotland and James Scott for the Scottish Resistance have now written an open letter to the management of the castle calling for the name to be changed. Although there's plenty more people who don't want it to be changed, so what are they to do? Uh, according to reports in the pro Skexit, The National. See, The National, I, I wouldn't buy The National simply because when it, it's already got, you know, you couldn't wipe your ass on it. Because it's already smeared with shit cover to cover, isn't it? Anyway, the letter is also signed by Bill Martin McKinnon of the Scottish Republican Socialist Movement and will be delivered to the castle later this month, probably wrapped around a bottle filled with petrol and lit, you know. Uh, it accuses the Redcoats of committing cultural genocide in Scotland, eradicating the Gaelic language, Highland dressing customs of the Highland clans, and it also claims they murdered innocent Highland people, armed women and burnt out native families, driving them away to the foreign lands. Have they not seen what the Jacobites did? Or is it only a one-sided history book you own? Uh, it goes on to say, to have, such a, uh, to have such a named cafe at Edinburgh Castle is a gross insult to the people of Scotland. No, it's a gross insult to Jacobites. Uh, and it's completely unacceptable. I don't think so. And it threatens to engage in a lawful campaign of encouraging the boycott of your cafe in the days and months to come. Yes, because you've got so little else to do in your lives, haven't you? This is the trouble. When you get these boring, inadequate men who go, oh, I've got to do this because this is the most important thing in my life. I know. Oh, please, go get a life, you sad wankers. The row over the name left many people baffled at the time. The cafe is close to another facility named after the Jacobites who fought against the Redcoats at Culloden. Tell you what. Here's the thing. If they change the name of the Redcoats, you've got to change the name of the Jacobites. What I suggest is change the Redcoats to something that the, the SNP would uh, would like and then change the name of the uh, of the Jacobite part, the Jacobite restaurant, and call it something else. The Cumberland Hotel. You know, General Wade or something like that. That'll just wind them up even more, wouldn't it? It'd be worth it for a laugh, though, wouldn't it? Uh, anyway, Scotland's most famous historian, Tom Devine, said, is he the most famous historian? One of, I suppose. Uh, said the image of Redcoats as a purely English force was a gross historical ev uh, error. Indeed, I saw it in Outlander. There was many a Scot in a red coat, let me tell you. He said the controversy about the Redcoat Cafe at Edinburgh Castle probably reflects the fact that for many Scots, the word Redcoat conjured up bloody images of Culloden and the slaughter of the clans. Do you know how many times the clans fought each other here? You know, read that history book. Uh, anyway, he said the slaughter of the clans both during the battle itself and even more brutally afterwards when the wounded were finished off in their final agonies by red-coated Germans. Just make that out there. Germans. Uh, there is, however, another important historical fact that needs to be borne in mind. From the Seven Years' War, 1756 to six, uh, 1763, many thousands of Highland and Lowland Scots were recruited into the British Army and fought in their red tunics throughout the empire until the uniforms for soldiers on active service changed later in the 19th century. Yeah, many a Scot in a red view, uh, in a red coat. So, you know, read your history books, boys. Stop being a dick. Go and get a life, and maybe do something less wankery with it. Incidentally, sidetrack. Um, red coats. They, they, the, the officers wore red coats originally, and it was in case they got armed, uh, injured. And the blood wouldn't show, you know, match the blood. And the soldiers didn't lose heart uh, because they couldn't see the blood. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is why the French army always wore brown trousers. Coming up. 
I'm going to leave that one there, but I'm going to have to finish off the day with a joke. So uh, there's a donkey. He's sitting in his house one day. Don't ask. Donkey's sitting in his house one day, and he watches a horse pull up in a van. The horse gets out and brings his stuff into the house next door. Just bought it. And he's watching boxes go in and that. So he gives him a, a day or so, and he, you know, let him get settled. And the donkey goes around, knocks on the door, and says to the horse, uh, Hi, I live next door. How are you doing? And they introduce each other and that. And they, they, the horse invites him in. And the donkey sits there and they're chatting away. And he notices there's all these cups on the side. Uh, you know, like trophies. And uh, he said, to the horse, what's all those? And the horse says, oh, well, before I retired, he said, I was a, I was a very successful racehorse. He says, uh, that's the gold cup. He says, that's uh, the thousand guineas. He says, that's, uh, that's the St. Ledger and so on, a few others. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, he says the donkey. And he's looking at the horse. And he's up his own arse a bit, isn't he? So the donkey goes home, he sits down, he goes on the computer, taps away, goes on to Amazon, gets a picture of a zebra. Next day, Amazon delivery, he puts it on the wall, he invites the horse around, the horse comes around, oh, how are you doing? You know, I'm sitting there, chatting away, eating a carrot. And uh, the horse looks up and sees this picture of a zebra. And uh, the horse says, oh, what's that? He says, uh, oh, back in my under younger days, says the donkey, I used to play for Juventus. Right, I'm done, I'm out, bye.